Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're at Mount Nara. So coming to my local trails now, well not really local, just work here. But I feel like lately I've kind of hit a bit of a plateau in my riding. So we're gonna try and address that today. And we're gonna go through my five top tips for getting faster on the trail. But the first thing I'm gonna need is a bit of a coach. So welcome back, Connor. So Connor's back. I know a few of people have been asking me, it's like, where's Connor, when's he coming back? Well. He's here today. Worst and sitting name, where's Connor? Where's Connor? <laughs> it's actually, that was a good yeah, yeah. Placement with the Instagram, put it there. <laughs> but yeah, Connor's a lot faster than me. We'll show a few of his riding clips now. And yeah, as you can see, he kind of knows what he's doing. I don't want to talk about too much, but yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> but yeah, we'll go down the trail now and then we'll meet you a bit further down. We'll go through our first tip. Ooh. That was fast. So, stop to the section here. We're probably gonna cover two tips here. So, the first one is obviously keeping your head up. That's always gonna be a great one. So, looking at exits, looking down the trail instead of looking at things in front of you. Kind of covered that in the Q&A last week. But yeah, you just don't wanna be looking at things right in front of you. You wanna be looking beyond it so then you won't get caught up on the small stuff. And then, in terms of getting caught up in the small stuff, you just want to look for those parts in the trail that you can unwade and wade or gap over and stuff like that. Any kind of small chatter is really going to slow you down. So doing those things to kind of smooth out the trail and kind of wading, unwading over that kind of stuff really helps out. Yeah, so. totally. I think just like even if you, you can't quite get the speed to pull into it, just getting your front wheel into it and then you know, eventually you'll just be able to get your back wheel into it and then compress. And I think we saw Phil through the videos get a little bit faster when he sort of was just pumping through it like it was a set of rollers yeah. rather than getting shaken around. And I think that helps when you're, you're looking forward and you're kind of finding those compressions where you can you know, unweight and weight yeah. and generate speed. Okay, so we'll walk down this part of the trail just to show you kind of what we're talking about. So you got this first section here, which you can kind of gap over. So as normally you can roll it, but we'll try and gap over that part there. Then we'll come down here and trying to kind of unweight through this section or possibly gap it as well and that's where we try and get some of the speed so I'll show you the first clip where I was just kind of riding it how I normally do and then I'll show you the second clip where I was kind of putting those things together and then we'll do them side by side and then we'll see how fast they got throughout this little section of trail interesting Okay, so we have no idea kind of if that was faster or not, but you said it looked better. I think, I think it looks better. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see when we get, we'll actually compare it. Yeah. But yeah, we'll go to the next spot now and then we'll look at something else. Okay, so we're at the next section now. So this one we're going to talk a bit more about kind of entry and then also just kind of letting off the brakes and letting the bike do its thing. When you're going down this kind of section here, especially when you've got a single pivot, if you're on the brakes, it's just going to make the rear suspension firm up a lot and you're just not going to track the ground as well and it's just going to feel like essentially you're riding a hardtail. So we'll head down the trail now and I'll show you what we're looking at. Okay, so heading down the trail here. So you kind of want to get your braking done pretty much here. I mean, you've got a bit of an uphill here, so that's going to scrub a bit of your speed off here. But you want to get your braking done pretty much before this rock here. Come up here, left the brakes, try and get as wide as you can to kind of 
open up this section. If you come in early, then you're just kind of going to mess up that straight line down. So come wide, and once you get up here, I mean, since from there, you want to be off your brakes all the way down. So you've got a bit of a chunky rock garden here, and then kind of off the brakes, off the brakes, and then there's like very small drop at the end, but there's plenty of support and down there, and the soil's pretty damn good at the moment. So we'll do one run just how I normally do it, then I'll do another run of fixing all things up and kind of following what we talked about there. And then we'll have a look at how Connor does it and then we'll compare all of them again. Eh, well, I kind of just said something else, but yeah, I've got it. I've got a, a little addition. In the second time Phil comes through, you can see him just using the downside of the rock, sort of like building on what we did before and just pushing into it. Um, he's generating a bit of speed and also just being off the brakes um, is allowing that suspension to work a bit better. Yeah, and I think that's probably the weighting and unweighting is kind of the really the biggest thing that you notice from kind of a more novice rider to getting towards an advance. If you look at all the races, they're just floating over everything. They're their legs are just absorbing everything and they're just kind of floating where the difference is I'm really stiff and I'm gradually getting a bit looser as kind of going down these things but I think that's the biggest difference that you notice looking at say someone like Connor coming down this stuff versus me and I think we'll go down a bit further and then we'll talk about another really basic thing but it's really going to change the way that you ride. Bye. Push, unbrake. Oh, unbrake. Can't wait. Welcome to Australian summers with the cicadas. So, <laughs> so we're here for the last tip, and it's a really simple one. Um, main thing about cornering and just general body position. So main thing is keeping your elbows out, reading that attack position, staying pretty neutral on the bike, and then going through corners, really leaning the bike over and keeping your weight in the center. So kind of showing it. You kind of dip one side and hold it up. There's plenty of good cornering tutorials out there, but. Yeah, you're kind of just getting that body position where you're leaning the bike over and you're staying very weighted. We do have a berm here, so that's kind of hold you up so you will not have to do that as much. But that's definitely something that you should do. And yeah, just generally keeping your elbows out, being in an attacking position, ready to absorb everything. Bloody cicadas. But yeah, we'll uh, hit this last section, show a few corners, so you kind of get that idea of what we're talking about. Sorry about the cicadas, it's just ridiculous. So yeah, we'll hit this last piece of trail, we'll tie all that stuff together, and we'll show some clips of that now. Okay, so one last thing on the way down. I know we said we we're gonna to go to the end, but we found something good. So perfect example here of a good line and a bad line. So I'll go up there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it starts all the way at the top. So if you're coming here, it looks like the natural line just wanna go straight down there and then you kind of get to that tree and then you have to kind of turn a bit quicker. So it's not 
and then once you get further down again it follows that kind of straight path there and it's going to be a little bit faster but it might not necessarily be the fastest because you got a corner at the end so if you follow here you go down the line here so this one here and then you would be kind of inclination to go off that rock and then kind of kink but you've got a little natural berm that you can take here so we'll go straight down here take that little berm there and I'll push this this way and then your natural inclination from here you can see that tree right there it's just to go your natural inclination is just go straight there because it looks like the smoothest line but what you'll find if we come straight through here then we hit the drop here then get onto that kind of high line there it opens up the corner so much more so normally if you went straight here you have to stop there then do a really sharp corner which isn't ideal so we're going to go straight here and then you got a really nice berm that will support you down there and it's nice and flowy as opposed to really chunky there's been some people who kind of take this sharp shrout inside line here but smooth as fast always remember that so we'll get Connor to give it a go now and show you and you'll see what I mean So you saw there how much you had to slow down for that corner so you had to really slam the brakes and get it around and then eventually made it over there. So it's definitely not the fastest way so yeah taking that high line we'll see now is definitely the fastest way. Okay so that pretty much wraps it up. How did how did you think I went? <laughs> You did very well. I think you progressively got so much faster and um, you absolutely nailed that sort of inside outside and like opening up that corner just up here. Yeah. I think it was wicked. And then that and just like staying off the brakes and sort of pushing to generate speed. Yeah, I think it comes down to gradual confidence, but those small things like just letting off the brakes and then kind of waiting and unweighting things, it's actually so much safer. Yep. Like when you're not getting, when you're stiff and you're just getting thrown around, that's when you get knocked offline and crash in rock gardens and stuff like that. So that's going to make the biggest difference. I think that's probably the one that I noticed makes the biggest difference. And then, I mean, getting your entries right to the corners and everything, getting your lines right and just letting off the brakes and letting it flow. Yeah. That's definitely where it's at. So if I remember the five tips right, we had uh, waiting and unweighting and kind of gapping some small things. Yeah. Keep your looking forward so looking at your exits and looking down the trail uh, get your braking done early stay off the brakes uh, you're getting your entries right as well and then also body positions a big one as well so getting those elbows out kind of just staying ready in the middle of the bike and kind of just keeping your legs a bit loose to kind of just absorb that ch ch chatter and stuff and using that upper body to kind of kind of rip row yep. <laughs> over things but yeah those definitely the main ones and if you actually want kind of more in-depth stuff I know Mick Longhurst from Dynamic Motivation, he just actually released all his training tutorials that were actually paid before and they're on YouTube now. So I'll put the link in the description for that if you want kind of more in-depth coachy kind of stuff. But this is just kind of five things that we both noticed on the trail that makes probably the biggest difference for us. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, also subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching guys. See ya. Bye.